tell you what, I'm looking forward to the day when I see how beautiful heaven must be. I tell you what, this world is getting worse and worse. But I'm looking for a day when I'll have no more worries in this world. Amen. Boy, we're looking for a homecoming one day that's going to get us out of this home down here. Amen. Whatever's going on today, friend, just remember it's temporal. It's not going to last forever. One day you and I are going to be around the throne of God. One of these days we're going to see him face to face. The one who saved me by his grace. Amen. Amen. Then there's days going to come when he's going to grab me by the hand. Oh, hallelujah to God. The son of God himself is going to take me by the hand. And he's going to lead me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. I don't know how I was going to preach. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I tell you what, friend. I'm, I'm looking for the day Jesus comes back. Oh, when I think of the beauties of heaven, when I think of all that's there before me and all that's going to happen, amen. Oh, glory to God. The things of this world get kind of dim, amen. amen. There ain't a person in here. If you're here this morning and you are not facing a problem, you're not facing a heartache, amen, you're going to, amen. It's coming your way if it's not on you. But, hey, it's all temporary stuff. It's all temporary things. The Bible tells me I'm going a different direction. Amen. The Bible tells me in the book of Revelation that, uh, that John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right. Oh, you know, what the, you know what this is? John's telling of what he's seeing that you and I are going to see face to face. Oh, friend, think about a world that's not corrupt. Think about a world that has no problems. Think about a world where there's no war. Amen. Think about a war where, where no pop. Hey, everybody say amen right here. Amen. Think about a day when there's no politics. Amen. 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 There's coming a day. We know heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim my eyes. There's sorrow everywhere you look. But in the midst of it all, there's the Son of God. There's darkness everywhere you look in this world. But in the midst of it all, there's the light, the Son of God. Oh, friend, what a day that'll be when we see Jesus. How beautiful heaven must be. Have you ever dreamed of a place that's called heaven? Have you ever had a dream at night that you were going to a place called heaven? Uh, hey, friend, this is all real. John said, I saw it. John tells us we're going to see it. And John said, and I, I, John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. The new city, Jerusalem, you read this book and you read the end of all things. Everything you read, friends, true. Amen. Now some of you look at me like I've lost my mind. No, I've got in my right mind because I know there's coming a day when I'm not going to worry about this stuff, brother. Hey, there ain't going to be no hurricane to tear the country up. I feel so sorry for them folks. I've looked on and I saw all people that's lost everything. And hey, man, they're in bad shape. But there's coming a day when that won't happen. Oh, can you imagine living in a perfect environment, in a perfect world, with a perfect hallelujah God, and where people's not going to have a fuss one with another about nothing? Amen. Not a thing, not a quarrel among nobody. Oh, friend, you're talking about a homecoming. You're talking about a day. You're talking about a place of peace and joy and happiness and no sorrow and no suffering and no pain. What a day that'll be. Amen. Oh, my goodness, when John saw what he saw and he said what he said, it was as if he himself were looking right into it and guess what he was. Right, A lot of the things he saw, he couldn't even write about. A lot of things Paul said, saw, he couldn't even write about. Right. Friend, our minds can only handle so much about, about heaven and, the, and the, the throne of God and 
and the hallelujah to God, the Lord Jesus himself. He died and shed his blood so that I might be free. He gave his life's blood so that I might not have to die and go to hell. Hallelujah to God. If you're saved for the grace of God, there ought to be some joy because you don't have to go to hell. Amen. And if you're here today and you don't know God, then I want to tell you what. You need to be concerned where you're going to spend eternity. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't do anything. All he's got to look forward to is the rest of this life. And then he'll die and go to hell. Or she'll die and go to hell without God. And while I'm eternity, while the age, hallelujah, while the age is rolled, I'll keep on praising him. Amen. As long as I'm praising God, those that die and go to hell will go to hell and spend eternity there. And as long as I'm in heaven praising God, they'll be in hell. Oh, my, you say, now, preacher, you're doing good. You've got talking about that. Hey, I'm glad I don't have to go there. <laughs> well, hallelujah, I'm not going to hell. If that don't turn something over in your soul, amen. If that don't fire you up, your wood's soaking wet, amen. We get so tied up in the cares of this world and I'm as bad as anybody. Hey, I don't walk up here on the cloud hiring everybody else. I'm just like you are. And I, I, I face things every day and I get so tied up in this world and the things of this world. But hey, there's coming today. I don't have to worry about none of it. How many of you got bills to pay? Raise your hand. There is coming a day when there'll be no bills to pay. Hey, Amen. <laughs> That's a new verse I just made up. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think I'll copyright that one. But hey, there's coming a day when you don't have to worry about paying no bills. Why? Because Jesus doesn't pay them all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he paid the debt that I could not pay. He's no more debt. No more sorrow. No more suffering. I, 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 George and Edith, I've been praying for them. But I know y'all having a rough time. I know that. I know you got a lot on your plate. But there's coming a day when that will happen no more. Amen. There's coming a day when you don't have to worry about mom and dad uh, falling and getting hurt. You don't have to worry about people going to the nursing home. You don't have none of that. Amen. Amen. When's that going to be, preacher? Could be before we eat lunch today. Could be before we... But before we have our next service here at Gable Street Baptist Church. Yes. I believe we're that close. Amen. Somebody tell me one thing that has to happen before Jesus comes. The only thing I know of that, that, that'll signal the coming of Christ when that last person is birthed into the family of God and the bride of Christ is made up and the body is made up and then we're out of here. Hey man, maybe it'll be today. Maybe somebody gets saved today and we'll go home to be with the Lord. Amen. You know what it is? There's a lot of lost people dying and going to hell without God. And I stand up here and preach with joy in my heart about the coming of the Lamb of God. I can stand up here and preach about how beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, Amen. fair heaven of rest for the weary. Hey, man, what a day of rest that's going to be for the weary one. How many of you get sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> hey, there's coming a day you ain't going to get tired. No drooping nor pining. Nobody walking around with a face look like he'd been eating saw briar. And old saying goes, he's, he's so sad he looks like a mule eating saw briar. And I ain't never seen that happen, but he must be pretty bad. I see so many sad faces from time to time. Some of you here this morning look like you're going to have to crawl out the door. You're so low. Hey, I'm telling you, the only reason you got to be unhappy today is because you're lost. Amen. amen. Come on. If you're saved by the grace of God, no matter what's going on in your life, amen, you're headed for a better place. This is only a temporary shelter. Amen. Yes, right. That old song, This World is Not My Home, I'm Just Passing Through, that's about as spiritual as I'm fine. That's right. One of these days, friend. One of these days, I'm headed to homecoming better than this in Cable Street. Amen. I like this today. 
I like the fellowship. I like, I like preaching. I like preaching when I don't know what I'm going to preach. Amen. <laughs> and I like the food. Amen. Amen. I like the roast beef and mashed potatoes and gravy and fried chicken. Peanut butter pie, and macaroni and cheese, and coleslaw, and green corn, and green beans, the biscuits, the cornbread, <laughs> banana pudding, strawberry cake, whatever. And the list goes on and on. I like all of those things, and I'm glad to be here for a homecoming, but better than that, I'm looking for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yes. Right Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, here's what's going to happen. The rapture's going to take place. You and I are going to, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You know how, my, how long the twinkling of an eye is? It's not the blink of an eye. I'm not winking at nobody. I'm just showing you. It's not the blink of an eye. It's a twinkle of an eye. Three one hundredths of a second is what the twinkling of an eye takes. That's how long it takes. In that much time, I'm going to be out of here. Then right after that, we go to the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> We're judged for the things we've done according to our deeds down here in the flesh. We're judged for those things, not for my sin. Amen. My sin debt was paid on Calvary. And those that stand because their sin will stand at the great white throne of judgment. But I'm standing in the judgment seat of Christ to receive or suffer loss for what I've done down here. Then after that, amen, be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what's going to happen at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's called a supper, so there must be food. And I doubt very, you know, I'm just surmising here, but I don't see how I could imagine there he eat gravy and biscuits. <laughs> or chocolate cake, not devil's food cake, won't be none of that. <laughs> Angel food cake, probably a lot of it. But the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be far better than anything you can I can imagine down here. Whether it's real food, whether it's whatever else God's got for us, I don't know, but it's some kind of supper that's going to be better than anybody that can cook at Gabriel's Creek. Amen. This is the best cook in Western North Carolina I know of. Amen. Probably farther than that, but that's about what I know around here. Get away from here, and I know they're the best cook. But look, no matter how good that is, it's not compared to what God's got ahead for us. That's right, so we're not, we're looking for a great homecoming service here today. We're having a good time, amen? amen. If you're not, I am, amen, I'm going to enjoy myself. Amen. But this, this don't even hold a candle to what it's going to be. Can you imagine a life, can you imagine eternity having a homecoming? For eternity. How many of you got loved ones in heaven that you want to see? Amen. Bless you. Man, I, I heard people say a long time ago when I was young that they had more folks over there than they do here. I'm beginning to understand exactly what that means. All my grandparents are there. My mama's there. Been there a couple of years shouting the praises of God. There's others that's going on to be with the Lord. And one of these days, I'm going to have a reunion with them. Amen. Amen. Believe that in all my heart. Amen. And there's people that, I have had people that not really care for my style of preaching and the way I preach and the things I say. And some people say I'm too harsh and some people say I'm too loud. I ain't going to change none of that because we're nobody. Amen. Whatever the Lord wants. But even them people that said that, if they make it to heaven, they probably will. They're saved by the grace of God. I know they will. Amen. We're going to get along just fine. Amen. I have, I've been in churches where people just, just I mean, they weren't, they weren't going to make up. They'd sit there and be mad at each other every Sunday and be a wet blanket on the service if it killed them. Most of them's gone now, so I guess it finally did. But if they're both saved, if they're both or all of them saved by the grace of God, guess what? They get to heaven. They're going to have to make up. Amen. <laughs> Oh, thank God, friend. I can only stand here and tell you what I little bit I know about our homecoming. But, boy, it's going to be a day, isn't it? Yes, oh, thank God. Looking for a wonderful homecoming. 
we all get to heaven. That's right, amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. For this day today. God, I thank you, Lord, for the blessing, God, you give us just to be here. I thank you, Lord, for leading us in the right way. Lord, what I thought I was going to do, I'll just do it next Sunday if you want me to. God, what we want to do here today is be obedient to thee. And I pray, God, that all we do will be to your glory and to your honor. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for making a way for one day, God, for us to be with you through eternity. So, Father, I pray now that you bless us this day again in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll ever have a bad no one looking around. I mind the Lord. You mind the Lord. I wonder if there's someone here in the building this morning just felt real uncomfortable when I'm preaching about heaven because you know you're not going to go there. The crowd this size, I'm sure there's someone here that's lost without God. Look, I don't want to embarrass nobody. I'm I, I'm not going to come to you or nothing else. I just want to pray for you. 